Hi, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Fireside Chats with Dave. My name is Dave Moore. I'm the museum manager here at the McKeesport Regional History and Heritage Center. And uh, we welcome you back for another edition of our uh, week or twice monthly uh, quote unquote fireside chats where we uh, typically look at different uh, topics around our museum uh, or different topics around Western Pennsylvania. And this week, um, we're going to continue, or actually, we're going to start a, a whole new uh, conversation this week on a, uh, a new exhibit that we've put in here at the Heritage Center, and that is the Arts and Entertainment exhibit, which uh, just recently was installed uh, right as the pandemic was ending and the center was reopening in June. So uh, I'm very excited to, to talk about that a little bit. And to uh, you know, tell you guys some a couple of cool stories and show you a couple of artifacts from that. Um, if you've missed any of our previous fireside chats, be sure to check them out on our website and our YouTube page. And uh, so this week we're going to talk about arts and entertainment. Um, this is a this is a really cool exhibit that uh, we just put into the center. Uh, as I said, as uh, the pandemic was winding or the closing of the center due to the pandemic was winding down. And uh, we were getting ready to reopen. We wanted to make sure we had something new for you guys to see um, when you guys finally were able to come back to the center. And that was this arts and entertainment exhibit. And uh, I'm incredibly proud of, uh, of the work that, that we did as a group to install this, uh, this wonderful exhibit and tell these stories. I think this is arguably our most diverse um, exhibit in the in the center, and I and I mean that in several different ways. Um, firstly, I I I look at it as being our most diverse because you have so many different um, different groups of people uh, in this area focused on. So it's not just you know the famous artists and entertainers from McKeesport. We look at Braddock. We look at Homestead. We look at West Mifflin. We look at Munhall. Um, uh, of course, McKeesport, White Oak, and uh, and the other surrounding Mon Valley towns. So, it's diverse in in the in the loc in the general areas around here where we focus on different people. And I also think it's very a very diverse um, exhibit in our inclusion of African Americans, in our inclusion of LGBTQ uh, individuals, of uh, of women. We have probably more women featured in this exhibit uh, than. Uh, many of our other ones, um, just because there, there's so many great female uh, artists and entertainers that we wanted to make sure their stories were told. So I, I'm very proud of the diversity of this of this exhibit, and very proud of um, the all the different areas in our region that we were able to focus on. And I hope you'll really enjoy that when you come in and see it for yourself. Um, but when it comes to this exhibit. Um, there's, there's some really cool things that are on display that I actually couldn't take out of the display to come up and show you uh, here uh, from the office. One of the really cool things that, uh, a couple of them that are on display are drawings by Dink Ohm. Uh, he was a local McKeesport artist and uh, worked for the, the Daily News. And we have a lot of his, um, a lot of different drawings from Dink uh, included in this exhibit. And um, I, I really hope that when you do come down, you'll take a look at these. These are the original drawings that are hanging up on the wall down there. Um, they're just absolutely beautiful pieces of artwork. Um, and and uh, one of the immensely talented man. Uh, and it's so cool to see uh, some of his work on display. Uh, and we're so lucky to have a, a lot of his work to, to show to you all. So um, that's definitely one of the cool things that I couldn't bring up. Uh, to show you. Uh, another couple cool things uh, include um, uh, a couple of movie posters from Dwayne Michaels. Uh, Dwayne uh, is a noted photographer from McKeesport and has transitioned into making um, some films over the last uh, 20, 20 years or so. Uh, he's an incredibly talented artist. Um, so we have a couple of his, uh, one, one of his movie posters on display. We have uh, his, uh, a memoir, a photographic memoir of his uh, in the display case. I didn't actually bring that up to show you. Um, but we also have some great photographs of his on display. And one of the particularly cool set 
um, that I have on uh, on the wall focuses on um, famous artists and entertainers uh, nationally, internationally that he's photographed over the years. Uh, and, and some of my favorite ones that I included were um, one, my absolute favorite is this uh, picture uh, of uh, of Dwayne shooting Johnny Cash from outside of a hotel room. So you get the reflection of Dwayne in the outside of uh, of that hotel room, but you still get to see Johnny Cash, the man in black, sitting there in a, in a chair smoking a cigarette and, and having a drink too. It's just such a beautiful piece of work. Um, also, uh, there's a great picture of him with Robin Williams that I absolutely adore. Uh, I was always a big Robin Williams fan. And then there's two great pictures, um, one of Sting, uh, the singer, and then another of Meryl Streep that um, that D Dwayne took, and they're just absolutely phenomenal pieces. Uh, I'm so happy to include those in this exhibit, and I and I really hope that uh, you'll take a look at those when you come down and see. But a couple of the things that I did bring up uh, that I thought would be really cool to discuss. Um, the first one is this. This is a a record of Little Richard's Tutti Frutti. And uh, I'm just a lonely girl. Uh, Little Richard, of course, uh, just passed away uh, in April. Uh, one of the most talented early rock and roll uh, influencers uh, in that genre of music. And Little Richard was, uh, I don't know if discovered is the proper term, but he was definitely promoted through a record company called Specialty Records. And the owner of Specialty Records was a gentleman by the name of Arthur Rue, who was from this area. He was from the Keysport. And um, we were incredibly lucky when we were doing this exhibit. We reached out to, to numerous uh, individuals that we planned on featuring in it. And Arthur was uh, one of the very, very few to respond to us. And he was so grateful and gracious. Uh, and just the fact that we thought to include him in this he sent us a copy of, uh, of a book in which he was uh, a, a, basically a biography of Specialty Records. And uh, he actually sent us a, a, a rather generous donation to create this exhibit. And one of the things we did, we don't typically like to buy um, our artifacts, um, but one of the things I definitely wanted was to have a Specialty Record in uh, th this exhibit. And... When I looked at his line of work, Little Richard was the the name that you know was so recognizable to me, and uh, the song "Tutti Frutti" arguably one of Little Richard's biggest hits. So I was lucky enough to find one of these 45s uh, online of uh, Little Richard's "Tutti Frutti." But the most important piece of this is the is the logo, Specialty Records, uh, which Arthur created. And um, it was only a couple days after I purchased this record that uh, Little Richard passed away. So it was uh, just like weird, weird timing. Uh, but it, it's such a it's, a, it's a very cool piece and one that we're, you know, incredibly proud to share and tell Arthur's story. Um, we'll stick with music. The other, one of the other cool artifacts that we have is a uh, signed record uh, from Jimmy Beaumont of the Skyliners, and this record features uh, Pennies from Heaven, When I Fall in Love, Tired of Me, Zing Went the Strings of My Heart, Since I Don't Have You, and I'll Be Seeing You, and that's just sign side one. And as I said, this, uh, this record was signed by Jimmy Beaumont himself, and of course Jimmy uh, was... Uh, of course, all of the Skyliners were born and raised in Pittsburgh, but Jimmy, uh, he settled down in McKeesport and lived here uh, for the remainder of his life until he passed away just a couple years ago. Uh, and, you know, he was uh, a performer until really until his dying day. And the Skyliners are such a big uh, musical uh, part of this town and, and, and the history of this town. And uh, in music that came from that generation, they're really one of the last uh, major doo-wop groups uh, that would come out of the early 1960s. And then you would really see a transition into, you know, popular music and rock and roll and things like that by the by the end of the decade. So the Skyliners were very, you know, instrumental in, you know, growing music in Pittsburgh, but also they were one of the last uh, major groups of that genre. 
uh, or a la- you know one of the last major groups that made headlines of that drama. Not to say that it's not still uh, going strong today, but um, I think you know what I mean when I say that it, it, it's kind of near the end of the, the heyday of doo-wop uh, in that era. So uh, that's a cool piece. It's on display uh, down in our exhibit. And one of the other cool uh, things we have on display, and there's nothing particularly special about this copy, um, but this is um, one of the best books on uh, the steel industry in Western Pennsylvania. And it was written by Thomas Bell, and it is called Out of This Furnace. And um, Thomas Bell was born in Braddock. He grew up uh, he grew up in the area before moving to New York City and eventually uh, wrote a number of books. But Out of This Furnace was one of one of probably his biggest, uh, biggest writing. And um, I remember having to read this book my freshman year of college at the University of Pittsburgh. Um, Professor Rob Ruck um, had us read uh, the first section of this book, which focused on um, Kratcha. And the story tells of three generations of uh, immigrant steelworkers, Slovak steelworkers in Western Pennsylvania. So you really see, you know, the struggles of, of Kratcha you know, coming to America and assimilating into the, the factories or into the, the, into the mills and life in America. And then you see um, Crotch's daughter who marries another steel worker and uh, in his involvement. And then eventually you get to the third generation of, uh, of the family and their involvement in the steel industry and the, and the ups and downs of uh, working in the steel industry, the unions in the steel industry. Um, it's just a fascinating story. It's so well written and it really takes you into life, uh, in this area and, and, and into the life of a mill worker at that time, or, or I should say over those three generations, starting in the 1880s and going through really up until World War II. Um, Thomas Bell, as I said, uh, a very, uh, well-respected author from this area, wrote several books, but Without a doubt, Out of This Furnace was uh, his biggest success. Uh, and we always recommend uh, that book uh, to anybody that's looking to learn a little bit about the, uh, the steel industry in Western Pennsylvania. Uh, and we're really proud to show that book as well as other books in our exhibit. So just a couple other things, uh, other individuals you might see in this exhibit. Um, we cover a number of actors. Uh, the biggest, obviously, is going to be Jeff Goldblum from Homestead, who was in the Jurassic Park movies, Independence Day, uh, and, of course, was uh, in Thor Ragnarok, as well as a number of Wes Anderson movies. Um, absolutely wonderful actor. Great musician as well. He's featured, uh, as is Tamara Tooney, who was featured on uh, um, Law & Order uh, Special Victims Unit uh, for the last 20 years or so. She was in the movie Flight. Uh, she had a major piece in a uh, in a soap opera, I, I believe one one day at a time or one life to live. I, I, it's blanking at the moment. Uh, she's featured, and then we look at um, other individuals that are involved, like uh, Mark Connolly, who was a playwright and wrote uh, actually won the Pulitzer Prize for uh, Green Pastures, uh, and um, he's. Uh, Joined by the likes of Paul uh, Zep- Zep- Zepanovich, I believe is the is the way that it's pronounced, who was a costume designer on movies like uh, uh, The Poseidon Adventure and, and, and Land of the Lost and things like that. Um, you have musicians from, you know, of course, the Skyliners and uh, Arthur Roop, but, you know, we focus on the Vogues. Uh, we talk about the rapper Sam Sneed. Uh, who, you know, really got his start, you know, alongside the likes of Dr. Dre and uh, created a great album just a, f- a couple of years ago. Um, Gabby Barrett, um, up and coming, up and coming country singer from Munhall, who was a star in American Idol just a few years ago. She's featured in this exhibit. Um, and then, of course, you have a number of artists from Dink Ohm to Arnold Varga, uh, Dwayne Michaels, and then uh, one of the other wonderful inclusions is Latoya Ruby Fraser. She's a photographer from Braddock uh, and a professor of photography at the Art Institute, I believe, in Chicago. And she's done a number of uh, great photographic um, social justice uh, series, including one on the Flint water crisis up in Michigan. Um, we feature some of those pictures in this exhibit. 
Um, so we, we tell a lot of great stories in this exhibit, and I really hope that you'll come down and uh, take some time to, you know, to read through and learn some of these people's stories, just like we ask you to do that in every other exhibit. But we're particularly proud of our brand new arts and entertainment exhibit, and we really hope that, you know, artifacts like, you know, Out of This Furnace and Arthur Roop's specialty records of Little Richard's Tutti Frutti um, will pique your interest as well as some of the other stuff that we have on display. So please come down. Please take a look at, at all the stuff that is changing around the center. Uh, we, we hope you'll find something that you didn't see the last time and you'll learn something new that you didn't learn the last time. Uh, just a couple of updates on the center itself. Um, the tickets for the 6th Annual Living History Tour of the McKeesport and Versailles Cemetery are now available on our website. Um, they're going to be all electronic tickets just for uh, the safety purposes with COVID. Um, so if you are interested in joining us for the Living History Tour, it'll be on Saturday and Sunday, September 12th and 13th at the McKeesport and Versailles Cemetery. Um, the tickets start for, uh, they are $10 a piece. And uh, you, you will purchase tick a, a specific time slot for your ticket. So 11.30 to 12.30, 12.30 to 1.30, 1.30 to 2.30 to 3.30. Um, and we ask that you make sure you come within uh, those boundaries of that ticket, uh, that ticket time frame. Because what we're trying to do is keep everybody socially distanced, keep everybody safe, but still allow uh, this great fundraiser and this great event to continue on. And uh, we're going to need all your support, not only just in coming, uh, but your support in working with us to uh, take the precautions necessary to do this, but also do this safely. Uh, so for more information on the uh, Living History Tour of McKeesport and Versailles Cemetery, please check our website. Uh, and you can purchase your tickets on there or here at the center, but we are encouraging you to purchase them online. Um, on August 29th, that is a Saturday, the week before Labor Day weekend, we will be hosting a flea market in our parking lot from, uh, I believe, 8 to 3 p.m., uh, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m., I believe. Um, it is definitely that Saturday, I can tell you that for sure. Um, so if you're interested in coming down uh, then, you can you know find some great treasures uh, uh, from the table set up in the parking lot, and then make sure you come in and take a look uh, at the exhibits. Um, other than that, uh, please continue to follow us on social media. Oh, one other great uh, thing I'd like to discuss. Um, the Curator's Book Club continues to go on. Uh, the newest edition is uh, The Devil in the White City by Eric Larson. Uh, it discusses the rise of Chicago, the 1893 World's Fair, intertwined with the story of America's first serial killer known as H.H. H. Holmes, who built a quote-unquote murder castle in the middle of Chicago and is um, proclaimed to have killed over from anywhere from a hundred to thousand, a thousand individuals uh, over his reign of terror in Chicago. Um, it's just an absolutely wonderful story. Inter, uh, three stories really interwoven together brilliantly by Eric Larson. But not only are we uh, continuing the curator's book club, but uh, we've actually partnered uh, with Completely Booked, uh, a small independent bookstore in Murraysville. Um, so if you are interested in purchasing one of the books that is part of our book club and to see which books are part of our book club, you can go and check uh, our website and see the list. Uh, but if you go to Completely Booked in Murraysville and you show your McKeesport ID, you will get 10% off those books that are part of our book club. Uh, so all you have to do is show your ID or mention that you uh, saw uh, the um, the book listed on our website, and you'll get 10% off through Completely Booked. Uh, and again, that is in Murraysville, and they are in the shopping center, uh, like where Burgatory and everything is, but their address is 201 Blue Spruce Way in Murraysville, uh, zip code 15668. Or you can check them out online at Completely Booked Store, uh, that's B-O-O-K-E-D, uh, dot com completely booked store uh they're they have a great staff down there they're very helpful very kind and we're so excited to be partnering with them on this project so uh if you want to support the center and you want to support uh, a local independent business uh local small bills business be sure to uh to go down and support completely booked and read uh, our recommendations through the curators book club 
Uh, as I was saying, make sure you follow us on social media uh, and Instagram and Facebook for all kinds of updates and, and interesting things. Uh, if you've missed any of our previous fireside chats or any of our programs, uh, including uh, our talk with uh, PGA Tour champions player Brian C Cooper, uh, they are all on our Facebook page and on our website and on our YouTube channel. So there's three different places for you to watch. So we highly recommend uh, you go watching them if you've missed any of them. And um, I think that's it. Everybody, please stay safe. Um, continue to practice social distancing, wear your mask, and uh, we'll see you down here at the center. And uh, we'll hopefully uh, be doing a lot more uh, cool uh, programs in the future that you guys will be involved in. And uh, again, get your tickets for the Living History Tour uh, on our website and uh, come support us. Thank you. Have a good night, guys. Bye.